assignment. This day is, um, I know some days to me are better than others. This is one of those days. And this is one of the most important days I think that we will uh, go through in the book. As well as the other day we went through uh, dealing with temptation, growing through it, and defeating it. And so our scripture verse, mm, excuse me, our scripture verse is, uh, we have two, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. And it reads, it is God himself who has made us what we are and given us new lives from Christ Jesus. And long ages ago, he planned, yes, long ages ago, he planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. Okay, and that was Ephesians chapter uh, 2 verse 10 in the Living Bible Translation. And our second verse, John chapter 17 verse 4, this is the message translation. I glorify you on earth by completing down. I glorify you on earth by completing down to the last detail what you assigned me to do. And so this day is dealing with our service uh, to God. He says that you were put on earth to make a contribution. We were put here on earth to make a contribution. He says that we weren't created just to consume resources. So God did not just put us here to take in to eat, to breathe, just to be here taking up space. No, we were here to give, to serve. He says that God designed us to make a difference with our life. Okay? As Christian believers, this is one of the reasons that God created us, to make a difference with our life. Okay? And so, we were created um, to add to life on earth and not just take from it okay so we were here we are here to serve and this is the fourth purpose that God has for us um, that he that he um, has in this book and so service to God is just another name for ministry okay so when you think of ministry that word ministry think of service and we as Christian believers all are called to ministry we all have a ministry that we are to fulfill in the earth and the first thing he outlined he gives bi biblical details of this and the first thing he says is we were created to serve God so we were created to serve God in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 we just read it the B clause it says that God good morning Brenda welcome it says that God has created us for a life of good deeds, which he has already be prepared for us to do. Good morning. So God has already prepared the good deeds, the good works, the service, the ministry. He has already prepared it for us to do. Okay? And so we are to serve in any way that we see the opportunity. And that's serving God. So when we are serving others... Um, we are serving God. So always look at it in that light that we are serving God when we are serving others. And that is one of the reasons God has created us. And we are in day 29 of Purpose Driven Life. And in Jeremiah chapter uh, 1 verse 5, <clears throat> the Bible says, Before I made you in your mother's womb, I chose you before you were born. I set you apart for a special work. Thank you, Apostle, for putting up the scriptures. So God created us all before we were even formed in our mother's womb, before we were even conceived, before we were even created. He had a plan just for us individually, okay? And he has set us apart to fulfill that special work that only we are assigned to, okay? And so we are to be in position and get in position to fulfill the work. The second uh, biblical detail, uh, it says that we were, we were saved to serve God. We are saved to serve God. So first, we were created, right? We were created to serve God. And now we are saved. Those who have accepted 
Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are saved to serve God. He says that the Bible says in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, it says, It is he who saved us and chose us for his holy work, not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan. So know that we are saved to serve God. He says that God redeemed us so that we could do his holy work. And we know that that word holy means set apart, sanctified. So there's a special work, a holy work, set aside, set apart just for you and I to, to fulfill. He says that we are not saved by service. So we are not saved because of the things we do. That is not how we are saved. But we are saved for service. And in the kingdom of God, there is a place for us to serve, right? There is a place for us. There is a purpose. There is a role. There is a function for us to fulfill in the earth realm. And the thing for us, if we do not know what that is, our job right now is to figure that out. Is to seek God to figure out why he created. We know why he created us. He created us, what? To serve. And the way we serve God is by serving others. And so if we are not sure on what we should be doing. Okay, we need to see God on what it is that we are to be doing. Now, how I started when I first, um, I always say when I first became saved for real. Like when I was really serious, serious. And um, was in 99. And um, so what I started doing, I had uh, three, three younger boys. I was a single mom. So, they had a, a Bible class for kids only, which was one of the things that attracted me to the church. And so, what I did was I enrolled my kids in the Bible class, and I volunteered to help. And so, I think I started, yeah, I assisted with the secretary, secretarial duties of, of the Monday Night Youth Bible class. So, that's where I started. I, was, I just wanted to help. <laughs> you know, I wanted, you know, I had to bring them, so I wanted to stay and be involved and kind of keep my eye on them as well. So I just volunteered to to help with those type of duties. I mean, I had administrative skills anyway. So that is how I started. Then eventually, in that same ministry, I began to teach. So then I, be, I began to teach um, the younger kids. I think at uh, age of six to eight. So I began to teach them. And so it's through through teaching them that I realized that, you know, I like to teach the word of God. I like to teach the Bible, you know. And and just from there, I end up becoming a director. And then later on, God called me to, uh, to ministry, to uh, teach and preach his word. And so it was a gradual growth process. So I'm, I'm telling you that to say, start somewhere. It may not be exactly where God may want you to be. But if you just start somewhere, God will get you to your destined place. So the thing is, you have to start somewhere. You have to be moving. You can't be sitting idle, uh, just warming the church bench or watching on TV. No, we need to just start somewhere in serving. Okay, and I'm speaking as far as in our local church. <clears throat> okay, and in um, 1 Corinthians Good morning, good morning. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20, the Bible says, <clears throat> it reminds us that God paid a great price for you. So use your body to honor God. And so when we are serving God, we are honoring God with this body. When we're using it to serve others. And we know that Jesus paid a a, a, a high cost for our salvation so we want to be mindful of the price that was paid for our salvation and we just uh, don't want to be saved from going to hell we want to serve as well and do what god has called us to do while we are still here and i know he mentioned in his day he said if god didn't want to use you while you were still here on the earth once we became saved he could have just took us on to glory have you ever thought about that? Why does God leave us here after we become saved instead of just zapping us up to heaven? Because there's work for us to do down here. There are other people that we need to reach. We are now God's 
hands, his eyes, his feet. We represent him in the earth realm. So we need to be doing um, what he has called for us to do to bring others into the kingdom, to show others that God is real, that he can change lives, that he can, you know, use us, even though we're not perfect, but God still uses um, imperfect people to do his work. But we are faithful and we are striving in the direction of being holy, okay? And so not that we're just living any old kind of way, but we are changing and, and it's a gradual process and, and it takes time. And so we are not to feel feel uh, 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 bad or, or leave the church or, or leave God because we make mistakes. We all make mistakes, okay, in this Christian journey. It's a part of the process, but we are growing and it's a, a slow process and we just need to, you know, work with God and God will work with us and we'll get through it. Okay, so don't get bent out of shape. Don't feel condemned. Know that we all go through it. And that's the reason God really encourages us to grow spiritually so that we can know how to handle those situations when they arise. Okay, where am I in the book? Next scripture verse, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And it says, because of God's great mercy, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God dedicated to his service okay thank you thank you apostle so in that scripture verse he says that the apostle john taught that our loving service to others shows that we are truly saved this is one of the signs that will show that we are truly saved in first john chapter 3 verse 14 it says that our love for each other proves that we have gone from death to life okay and so we have a saved heart and a saved heart wants to serve we should want to serve it should just be in us to serve okay and that is one of the signs that you are saved and that you represent Christ and so as we grow and mature the more we'll live for self and live for him and in living for him we are living for others Okay, you're living that selfless life then. He says that another term for serving God, he says that many misunderstand, and it's that word ministry. You know, when we hear ministry, we think of, oh, it's a preacher, it's a, a priest, or, you know, we think of these higher ministry callings when we hear that word ministry. No, ministry has different levels to it, okay? So wherever we are serving, whenever we are serving, that's ministry. That's ministry. If you are holding the door for someone to um, to come in the door behind you or before you, if you run and open the door and hold it for someone else, that's ministry, okay? Anywhere where we are serving others is ministry, not just in church, not just because of a, a person who has a, a higher title or position. Even babies, even our young children have uh, ministry to do. Okay, and it's teaching them how to serve and serve others and to do it out of a selfless heart. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah what does it say? I got a lot of words back here. It says, ah, dwell in possibilities, be the change you wish to see in this world and in a world you were wait in a world where you can be anything be yourself go confidently in the direction of your dreams yeah behind me you see <laughs> look i forgot i got words back there thank you for pointing that out and so um yeah so service and ministry are syn synonyms service and ministry are synonyms okay and so don't, don't misunderstand that word ministry. It just means to serve, to serve. Let me watch the clock, clock. Yes, God writes on walls. Yes, he does. <clears throat> um, and he goes on to talk about, remember in the Bible when Peter's uh, mother-in-law was sick and Jesus, uh, he healed her. And after he healed her, healed her, what did she do? She began to serve Jesus. She began to serve. And so <clears throat> he's saying in that, that we are healed to help others we are blessed to be a blessing we are saved to serve not to just sit and do nothing okay we are saved 
for ministry. And the question he asked, now I'm put a star here, so it, I, it's something that really stuck out. A question he asked in the book, he says, have you ever wondered, I think I told you that guys this, but I'm going to read it. Good morning, counselor. Come on in the room. Have you ever wondered why God doesn't just immediately take us to heaven the moment we accept his grace? Have you? Why does he leave us in a fallen world? He leaves us here to fulfill his purposes. Once you are saved, God intends to use you for his goals. God has a ministry for you in his church and a mission for you in the world. Okay? So he has ministry in the church and mission in the world. Okay, and the third thing he talks about is we are called to serve God. So first we what? We were created to serve God. We were saved to serve God. And now we are called to serve God. Okay, and the Bible says that every Christian is called to service. And that's in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 14. And so know that we are all called to serve God. God. Okay? And so he says that being a full time Christian is service, is ministry. And that is what we are called to full time ministry as Christian service. Servants, doing a service. He says a non serving Christian is a contradiction to that term. Okay? So we are called to full time Christian service. Period. In the Bible, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, the Bible says that he saved us and called us to be his own people, not because of what we have done, not because of what we have done, but because of his own purpose. And then Peter adds, you were chosen to tell about the excellent qualities of God who called you. And that's in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. So he says that any time that we use our God-given abilities to help someone else, we are fulfilling our calling. Okay? We are fulfilling our calling. So don't look at it that God has to call you to some big ministry to be a, a preacher or, a, you know, don't look there always. He may call you to that later. But for now, whatever he has called you to do in ministry, that is what he's called you to. He has given you the abilities to do it, and that is part of your calling. Now, your your callings, like I said, I had a gradual change um, in what I was doing. And so he called me to what he truly had for me eventually. Later on, I, you know, I was able to hear and hear clearly what he wanted me to do. So don't. Don't, don't just sit there. Do something. Start small. Just volunteer. Help. Serve. <clears throat> okay? In Romans chapter 7, verse 4, the Bible says that now you belong to him in order that we might be useful in the service of God. So we do not want to get caught up in our careers and, and all of those different things. We want to also balance out our life and have God first have God first and foremost in whatever we do he says that in some churches in China um, he said he talks about how they welcome believers and and as telling them you know now you have Jesus's eyes to see Jesus's hands to uh, work with and I said that earlier see you have a good day um, so yeah so we represent uh, Christ in the earth realm so we are his hands we are his feet we are his eyes we do his work now in the earth realm and we do it through his word and through his Holy Spirit that lives in us and through his guiding and directing he says that one reason why we need to be connected to a church family and we we stress that you have a church family is to fulfill your calling to serve other believers in practical ways so again, you cannot go through this Christian life in isolation without fellowshipping with, with the saints. God has called us all to be a part of a local church body. And so if you do not have a church home, we pray that you will find 
<clears throat> find a church home that God um, has for you. Okay? Um, and the Bible says, all of you together are Christ's body. And each one of you is separate and, ne and, <clears throat> and necessary part of it. Okay, so we are needed in the local church. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 23. And I know just from my, my local church that we need laborers. We need workers, right? I mean, you cannot um, do the work of the ministry if you do not have people uh, volunteering and, and working in those different positions. You cannot have Bible classes and Sunday school classes without having teachers, without having staff to, to get the work done. You cannot um, have a Thanksgiving dinner to, to feed the homeless if you do not have people there to, uh, to uh, distribute the food, to set up, to clean up. I mean, it takes human bodies to get the work of ministry done, okay? And so that is so important for us to serve. We must be serving to get the job done. Um, and he says that there are no insignificant ministries in the church. It doesn't matter where you serve. If you're an usher, if you um, volunteer to help out in the nursery, whatever um, area that you can help in, no effort is too small. Okay? We're all part of the bigger picture. You know, some people work behind the scenes. Some are out in the forefront. It doesn't matter. Everybody's position is significant and it is needed good morning and so the question he also goes on and asks is what happens when one part of our body fails to function he says the rest of the body suffers so if if the body of christ <clears throat> which is many members but different functions if we're not pulling our weight and fulfilling the part that we need to play then an, an, uh, another area in ministry suffers from that and so we want to be in position and where God can use us in our local churches as well. Number four, he says that we are commanded to serve God. We are also commanded to serve God. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, uh, Jesus was unmistakable, unmistakable. And he says that your attitude must be like <clears throat> my own. He says your attitude must be like my own. For I, the Messiah, did not come to be served. This is Jesus speaking. He said, I did not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life. So we are to have that same stance on our Christian life. He says, for Christians, service is not optional. It's not optional. We are here to serve. We were created to serve. And, and here we are commanded to serve and so we are to have that heart like christ and to to serve and to give just as jesus did that is part of our great commission here in the earth ramp okay and again i talked about you know we have to grow and mature and ministry takes us maturing to be able to know where we should be to do what we are called to do and to work in those areas and stay there and not you know give up and be defeated that's why we have to grow and mature and be confident in who God has called for us to be and so we must put our service into action okay he says impression without expression causes depression and so we have to serve he says that study without service leads to spiritual stagnation. So if we're just going to church and if we're just taking in the word and learning and learning and learning and not giving back, not giving out what we're learning, he says we become stagnant. We become stagnant. And he did a comparison of the Sea of Galilee versus the Dead Sea. Now the Sea of Galilee is a lake full of life. And it's full of life because it takes water in and it also gives water out. Whereas the Dead Sea, it has no outflow. So the water is just there, the lake is there and it's stagnated. And so since it has no outflow, there's no life flowing in it and the, the fish that are there and um, all of that 
dies okay and so again we want to not just constantly take in the word take in and never give out never give back we have to have that outflow he says and the last thing that many believers need today he says this the last thing you need is another bible study he said because we we have plenty of bible studies we have plenty of people going to bible study again taking in the word taking in the word right but we need to serve and give back okay and he says we have to exercise our spiritual muscles um, and so then he goes on to talk about how to prepare for eternity preparing for eternity he says at the end of our life on earth we will stand before God he said and God is going to evaluate us on how well did we serve other people while we were here and in Romans chapter 14 verse 12 it reads that each of us will have to give a personal account to God what did we do with our life here on earth okay and so we want to hear him say well done thy good and faithful servant okay so we are without excuse we know what he has called for us to do we know why we were created right we were created to serve God we are commanded to serve God we were saved to serve God and we are called to serve God and so we do not want to be busied up doing everything else for self attaining our own goals working having fun you know doing all these other different worldly things and not doing what God has called for us to do which is to serve others okay so that is very important as a Christian believer he says that we are only fully alive when we are helping others and in Mark chapter 8 verse 35 Jesus said if you insist on saving your life you will lose it only those who throw away their lives for my sake and for the sake of the good news the gospel will ever know what it means to really live and that is so true and so that is very important it is repeated numerous times in the gospels and so we are to be serving not just existing because this life that we now live is meant for ministry meant for service and so god wants us to learn how to do that unselfishly and as we grow and mature in the things of god and the love of god it will become second nature to us and the last outline is service and significance he says that we are going to give our life for something we are we're going to give it for something and so what will we give it for our careers a sport a hobby fame wealth what will we give it for and so service he says service is the pathway to real significance and in Romans chapter 12, verse 5, the Bible says, Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body. So as we are serving in the family of God, we are taking on eternal importance. Eternal importance, which will last forever. And we want to make a difference. God wants us to make a difference in this world. And so we have to be about our father's business he says that if you're not involved in any service or ministry what excuse have you been using because we are without excuse and if we are making excuses we need to stop and get on track with what God wants for us to do okay thinking about my purpose point to ponder service is not optional service is not optional verse to remember for we are god's workmanship created in christ jesus to do good works which god prepared and which god prepared in advance for us to do ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 the niv translation and our question to consider 
What is holding me back from accepting God's call to serve him? That's the question for you to consider, for us to consider on today. Any prayer requests? We want to keep uh, Vivian lifted up. She's on the loss of her family member. Um, as well as um, others who are going through bereavement. We want to keep those who are uh, in the hospital um, lifted for healing. Keep, the, keep them in our prayers. Those who are at home recovering and going through therapies, we want to keep them lifted in prayer as well. We uh, lift up each and every person on uh, the broadcast and those who will watch the replay. We lift up you and your families as well as our families. And then we pray that um, we will um, do what God has called for us to do. He's created us to serve him. He has saved us to serve him. He's commanded us to serve him. And so we want to uh, be about our father's business. Um, and he has called us to serve him. And so remembering that uh, ministry uh, is service. And so God, whatever, whatever area, God, you have for us to serve in, God, we pray that we would be um, in our proper place that you have for us. And God, if we are not there already, that you would get us to that place that you will lead and guide us and direct us in the right direction that you would have for us to serve. And so God, forgive us of our sins, creating us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. And Father God, we just lift up each and every uh, prayer request that I have named as well as others that you would heal the sick, comfort the, the bereaved hearts on today. And God, just continue to work a work in those who are at home recovering as well. And there may be some in um, uh, rehabs recovering. And God, just work a work as only you can do. Use us for your glory. Keep us mindful that we are here to serve. Help us to live as you, um, as you would have us to live in a life of love and live unselfishly and live serving others. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank God. Amen. And we will see you guys in the morning. Toodles, the White Catch the Replay. We're signing off. Love you guys. Have a blessed day. Thanks for inviting your followers. Catch the replay, you guys. Toodles.